Hey everybody, it's me Angel Benton and it's time for another edition of Angel Sudsy Recap where we delve into the world of daytime television and do a few reality shows on the side. And one of the shows that we are doing is Bold and the Beautiful. But before I get into that, yes, I just got out of the shower. <laughs> so uh, my, my hair is a little wet because it's really hot. So I decided I was going to cool off in the shower and I'm going to keep my hair a little wet because um, it cools me down. So that's that. Okay, so Bold and the Beautiful. So first of all, uh, I'm very excited about the Bold and the Beautiful um, luncheon. I'm going to a Bold and the Beautiful luncheon, I think in August. So I'm very excited about that. That ought to be good. Um, okay, so in terms of the show, there were a few storylines that like that are normally front burner that really weren't really front burner this week like this past week we didn't see Saul at all which kind of makes me sad a little bit I really do enjoy Saul however wait wait but Sally and Thomas were featured on one episode and not just that but Thomas was actually it was two episodes and Thomas was shirtless for the second one so that was delightful I appreciate that so thank you very much CBS and Sony for creating that scene. That was delightful. Thumbs up from me. Okay. Um, yeah, so they, they've they been driving a lot of story recently, so now it's time for kind of them to take a back burner. There were two storylines that were really front burner for this past week, okay? One of them was this ridiculousness with Maya's baby. <sighs> And now they've roped Rick into it, too. Here's the thing. I love the Avants with their own individual stories. You know what I'm saying? Every time they come together for some big family story, it is just a big snooze fest. And Zenday, Zenday is working my nerves. I know you're probably thinking, well, why? I mean, he's made this change, and now he's trying to do the right thing. Um, too little, too late. Right? I mean, like, seriously. I was, oh, I'm over it. I'm over it. I just feel like they don't really know where they want to go with him as a character because they write him one day, one one way, one day, and then the next day they write him completely different. So props to Rome Flynn who plays Zenday because, oh, is that, what is that? Some sort of cotton? Um, props to Rome Flynn because, you know, he comes in and does his job. He does it well. But the material that they give him is not good and it has never been good ever. I would rather see Sasha than Zenday. I hate to say that, but it's true. Anyways, so yeah, and now they've got Rick involved in the whole thing about Nicole's now not sure if she wants to sign the adoption papers and Julius is, you know, um, in her ear saying, you need to, you don't need to sign it ever because you're meant to be Lizzie's mom. You are Lizzie's mom, blah, blah, blah. Well, guess what? If she wants a fucking um, custody battle on her hands... She'll get one because Lizzie's dad is Rick Forrester. So, blad ow. How you like me now? Okay. So, so yeah, that storyline is just annoying. I just, I just. <sighs> but did you, okay, this could just be me. But have you noticed when you watch the show in HD that the makeup artists, because Maya is played by a cisgendered female, but she's playing a transgendered female, have you noticed that they've started adding a little bit of shadow underneath her makeup? Just the slightest bit. Have you noticed that? Is that just me? Am I imagining it? I think that they might be doing that. And in a way, that's great because, you know, that makes the, her storyline a little more believable. But um, I don't know. I, I don't know. I just I just want to wash my hands of the whole thing. It's so annoying. But the other storyline that is front burner, Sheila fucking Carter. I, oh God, I'm so living for Sheila Carter. I really am. See, y'all thought when Quinn came on that she was crazy, right? And I was saying the whole time, I was saying, oh no, she's not crazy. She's nowhere near as crazy as Sheila right? And what happens? They bring back Sheila and the bitch proves exactly my point because she runs into Quinn and Quinn's like, I don't appreciate you coming to see my husband when I'm not here. 
And she's like, oh, interesting. Okay. And then Queen goes to grab her arm to escort her out. And she, then that's when she snaps. She's like, don't you ever touch me or I will snap you in half. Oh, it was great. Uh, and then the look on Quinn's face, she was like, you could tell that she had bit off more than she could chew and she knew it too. Oh, it was genius. It was genius. And now, crazy ass Sheila has heard that Charlie is suspicious of Quinn and Ridge. So, um, that's, that's going to be, that is, that is a gold mine of story. It's going to be great. Cause she, so she was eavesdropping on, on, um, Charlie and Pam at Il Giardino. And FYI, like, is there, are there any other restaurants around or, I mean, or is that the only one that's on the CVS lot? I mean, like really they can't do another set somewhere else. I mean, it always has to be Il Giardino. <sighs> okay. Sorry. Like, I understand that soaps are on a budget. And I understand that they can't do a whole lot. But, I mean, there's got to be more creative ways that they can come up with different sets. But you know what set I'm glad to not be seeing quite so much of? Bikini. I hated that bar. Because here's the reality. So, Forrester Creations is located somewhere in West Los Angeles by like Century City, Beverly Hills, like in that area, right? Okay. Malibu, for those that are un unfamiliar with the geography of California, Malibu is like an hour and a half away, okay? It's a long ways away from West Los Angeles and it takes, because it takes forever to get there. So when you go to Malibu, like these people on the show would be like one minute they're in the fort in the Spencer building and the next minute they're in Malibu. What? I mean, like really? I I that I hate. So I'm glad Bikini's gone. Now, granted, Liam's house is still there. He's still in Malibu, but at least we're not going to see that much. I mean, because that is that that's that is a really suspending belief. That's really a little bit insane. And there's something else I want to address too. So I've heard, I've gotten some pushback from people about me declaring my love for Sheila Carter because they're like, well, the woman that plays her, Kimberlyn Brown, is a Republican. And, you know, and here's what I have to say about that. I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit what her political views are. I don't care. It's not Kimberlyn Brown is the one I'm talking about. I'm talking about Sheila Carter, who played Sheila Carter, right? whoever's playing Sheila Carter, right? Now, granted, Kimberlyn Brown is playing her now and she does a great fucking job. But she hasn't always played Sheila. Um, Sandra Nelson played Sheila, or at least we thought she was Sheila, on Young and the Restless um, a while ago. So I'm just very curious to see how this is going to play out. So again, I think this is a golden opportunity for Young and the Restless. So someone's got to find out that Sheila's back. Hopefully it's Lauren. Hopefully it's Lauren. Or, you know, if Sheila goes back to Young and the Restless, maybe she can kidnap Scott again. Or, you know, I mean, like, there's a, so much history from everyone there. And then maybe we'll find out who the mystery woman is that looked like Phyllis. And then Gina Tagnoni can play a dual role. Get another fucking Emmy. She's great. So... Yeah, I'm very excited about... I just, I just... I'm so excited that she's on the show. You have no idea. So I don't give a shit what her political views are, to be perfectly honest with you. As long as I find out that she's not, like, you know... Because this that's what makes this country great, is people with different political views, you know? And I think that in the, this past election, people have really forgotten that. People have really, like, gotten crazy, you know? Like, you know... Uh, uh, I, I'm going to... I'm going to table this discussion for now because I'm going to get go off and get heated and that's not what I want because uh, my point is is that I love Kimberlyn Brown. Well, not Kimberlyn Brown. I love Sheila. And you know what? No, I love Kimberlyn Brown. I might not agree with her politics, but I love her just the same. And I love the way that she does Sheila and I'm so glad that they have her back. Period. The end of it. Okay, I'm just saying. Right? Does that mean that I'm going to stop resisting or doing marches or, you know, promoting good candidates? No, but that doesn't mean that I'm going to hate the people that don't. I mean, like, really? I mean, come on, people. Just grow up a little bit. Just a little. <sighs> okay. 
Anyways, thank you so much for logging on today. I do appreciate it. Uh, please feel free to follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Angel Benton. And you can hashtag Bold and Beautiful to talk about the Bold and Beautiful. Or you can also hashtag uh, R-H-O-N-Y or Real Housewife shit to talk the Real Housewives in New York, which I'm doing tomorrow. And you can also hit that can that fancy little subscribe button on my YouTube channel so that I get you get all of my videos sent to your inbox every single day. Okay, thank you so much, everyone. Have a wonderful night. I will chat with you tomorrow night. Peace out. Wubba, wubba, wubba.